Today I'd like to talk to you about eSports and we're starting eSports here at SUNY Potsy and I'm very excited about it. It's been about a year that we've been working on this. Uh, one of the things that I've encountered is as I explain eSports to the students, the general reaction I get is yes. And when I explain eSports to some of the administrators or older folks or my colleagues, they kind of go, what the heck are you talking about? So rather than explain over and over and over again to each person, I said, you know what, I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to use this TED experience as a chance to explain to my colleagues what this is, because my guess is I'm not the only one trying to explain this. Right now, this is probably something a lot of people are trying to explain. So my hope is this could be a conversation starter. You could watch this video and then you could have a conversation in kind of a more informed way. This is a little bit about me. The one thing that I'll bring to eSports that may be a little bit unique is activity. So the one thing that people think about with eSports is, oh, we don't want people playing video games and being sedentary. And I think that's probably the opposite of how I conceive of eSports. I think that if you start with wellness and you think about mind, body, and spirit all together, I think that's what we're looking for for SUNY Potsdam eSports. So last fall, we had a FIFA tournament to kind of kick things off. This is our gaming space, which we're pretty proud of. Uh, we had good attendance. Um, we had great spirit there. It was just great energy. So we actually ran a little Pong tournament, you can see there on the side, kind of went all the way back to the late 70s. And that was actually pretty engaging um, while people were waiting for their turn to play in the regular FIFA tournament. That's a little shout out to Ernest Klein for all my Ready Player One fans out there. And here, when I started on this talk, um, I kind of said, you know what, other people must be asking this question. Maybe other people have answered this question even. And in fact, there are a few people who've tackled it. And some people have come to this conclusion, which hurts, honestly, when I see this. I'm like, man, that really hurts. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, you know what, I, I bet he just doesn't understand. Because usually it's fear, I think, ultimately, comes from ignorance. And I think that if you just don't know about something, your first instinct is to fear it. And I think that's kind of why I'm here today. So I'm sort of channeling at this point. My ancestors, this is my grandfather, Pete. He was a, a kind of a hero to me. He was a, also an athlete in college, also a scholar, also a, a superintendent of schools. He brought basketball to my home school in Harrisville. He actually started with the New York State High School Athletic Association, the idea of intersectional play in the mid-70s, and he incorporated female representatives from each section into that environment. So I'm really proud of him. And the one thing he is, he's a referee, and he had this thing on his refrigerator that said, don't judge someone unless you've walked a mile on their moccasins. And I think that's kind of what I would say for eSports, is if you don't know a lot about it, try not to judge until you know a little bit more. So this is maybe a few feet, not necessarily a mile. So what I'd like to do is kind of break down real sports as we think about them in terms of traditional sports and eSports and see how they compare. So the first thing is real sports are athletic. That's the big one everybody talks about. Um, eSports are athletic. Um, cortisol produced in your brain is similar to that of a NASCAR driver. We have uh, heartbeats that go up to 160 to 180 beats a minute. We have uh, reaction speeds that are comparable to Major League Baseball players or NHL goalies. We have movements and on the keyboard and mouse that mirror that of high-level musicians. Um, we're talking about six to seven movements per second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Every second for perhaps an hour, an hour and a half long match. So in the end, the German Sports University said esports are just as demanding as most other, other types of sports, if not more demanding. Um, other have weighed in on this. Um, the US government said, you know what? We've got to figure out what to do with these esports athletes. We've got to put them here on visas. So what visa do we put them in on? So they went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And finally, they said, you know what? These guys are athletes. We've got to put them on visas. You could say the question has been answered in 2013, but people are still talking about it. The United States Sports Academy weighed in on this. Not only did they say that esports is a real sport, they said, hey, NCAA, elbow in the ribs, it's time for you to get on board too. And for the NCAA folks watching out there, here's a little elbow in the ribs for you to get on board. You can get injured playing real sports. Can't do that with eSports. Well, yes, you can. Three injuries that are common to eSports are tennis elbow. Johnny Manziel came down with tennis elbow. On the right, you see carpal tunnel. That's something that David Price of the Boston Red Sox had. And then in the middle, you have back pain, which is sort of not unique to any sport. That kind of happens all over the place. You can see also there's retina fatigue. 
So you have uh, kind of a whole litany of things, which is why here at Potsdam, I reached out to our exercise science program and we developed a, a program for our esports athletes. And at our first meeting, we said, all right, what can we do to make you guys healthy and make sure we don't incur injury? And so we handed out this exercise science program. And this will have to expand because esports as we know it is changing. Right now, there's a thing called VR esports. And if you've seen VR esports, you have sort of your virtual reality space, but instead of sort of movements here, you have movements that are like this. So you're moving around and crouching and moving because you don't want your body to be seen by the other person. And so when you start moving in these whole body movements, then you start getting into a whole different uh, domain of training. There's big money in real sports, and as you may know, there's big money in esports, and it's only growing. 1.8 billion by 2022. Lots of fans. This might surprise some people. More than the Super Bowl. So yes, 200 million people watched the League of Legends World Finals. But it's interesting, the fan base on the left is only 427 million and growing. So how do we get 200 million? Dedication, super dedicated fan base. Um, real sports have rules and regulations. There are now federations that have popped up all over the world to support esports, as well as here in the United States. Uh, the ECAC is the one we'll be participating in next year, and we hope to move to NACE the following year. Um, the one thing I'll point out is the NFHS, that's a big one, that's the National Federation of High School Associations and they deal with athletics and we have up to 19,000 or more that may be jumping on board with esports in the very near future. Real sports are spectacular, esports are spectacular. So you can see here this is the finals where the 200 million people were watching in South Korea, 23,000 on hand, so this looks and feels every bit like a major sporting event. Real sports are expensive. Well, esports are not expensive. One of the things we don't have to deal with um, is travel as much because you can play from home. Now, there are big events that you need to go to, but in general, travel is a little less expensive. Equipment is a moderate cost. Um, you can see some of the costs up there, but compared to typical athletic equipment or arenas, um, relatively inexpensive. Structure elevates real sports. This is relatively important for me because I did some studies on this with Grand Theft Auto, a, sort of a trilogy of studies. And what we found is, it was kind of cool, we put people in a virtual environment and said, here are some things we'd like you to do. And so the people generally said, okay, I'll give it a try. But it didn't take long before they kind of went off the rails. And what we found was lack of structure and attention leads to all sorts of delinquency in virtual worlds. And that right now is actually a problem where we have a lot of kids playing games in unstructured environments, and that leads to toxic environments. And those toxic environments actually push away people from esports, and specifically it pushes away women. So right now there's an issue with young girls and women playing esports because they don't want to be in the arena with these toxic men. And why is it a toxic environment? Because we're not paying attention to it. Real sports build character. Esports build character. This is the high school esports league, and they basically say there's a whole group of people out there who may not have been touched by traditional sports that now can be touched by esports, and that can contribute to the entire school ecosystem. NFHS, basically they say teamwork, communication, strategic thinking, leadership, but the important thing is they say it's now time to redefine what we think of when we say athlete, and I couldn't agree more. Well, what about the Oxford definition of sport? So does it meet the Oxford definition of sport? An activity involving physical exertion and skill which an individual or team competes against, in this case, for entertainment, I would say without question. The physical exertion piece is the one that people point to, but I would point to you can't have injuries unless you have physical exertion. Now, it may not look like the physical exertion that happens in one sport or another, and that's actually some fodder for people talking about this sport's better than that sport's different from this sport, I would say it's different than other sports, but it's not not a sport, and it meets every piece of that definition, although I don't think that's a great definition. I would offer a different one. I think we should think of sport as an activity involving human performance and skill in which an individual or team competes using agreed upon rules and regulations. Now, why do I say human performance instead of physical exertion? I think if you have dueling banjos with a set of rules and a nice tournament structure and you have a winner at the end, that's a sport. If you want to have somebody going out and doing dueling pianos 
that's a sport. And the reason I bring up these two music examples is there's a large overlap between musicians and esports athletes. And one of the reasons is, is that it takes the high degree of mechanics to be a musician, just like in esports, but it also re requires a high degree of improvisation, the creativity piece. So that's why the musicians do so well. I would also define esports as playing video games competitively as an individual or a team using agreed upon rules or regulations. I would drop the entertainment piece because I think you can have esports and you can have sport without the entertainment piece. Um, I don't think we need fans in order to call it sport. Um, here's one real sports prepare you for, no, sorry, um, that's esports prepare you for STEM careers. You can see some of the things there. One of the neat things that Jason and Richard are doing at Stroudsburg, um, Jason is another. Uh, techie jock nerd guy that I hang out with. Um, there's a few of us in our circles. Uh, anyway, he's done this really cool thing where he's bringing people in and he's creating affinity spaces. Jim G, a researcher with game-based learning, the field that I do my research in, he's definitely way more known than I am. Jim is really interested in the idea of creating spaces where people get together and then they sort of Based on some sort of common goal, in this sport's competing with esports, they say, all right, what are the different trappings of technology that we can use to kind of use as building blocks towards potential future careers? And so to me, that as an educator, that's the most exciting part for me. One of the things you may ask next time you have laparoscopic surgery, ask your surgeon, uh, do you play video games? Because if they do, 37% fewer errors during surgery. Beauty emerges from real sports. I've got a video actually from our Pong tournament that I'd like to play. So I'll shout cast a little bit. The game plays to 15. They're at 10 10 when it started. Now it's 11 10. We're playing best out of three. They've each won one game, so this is the third game. So everything is a race to 15. Vamanos is let's go. Let's go. Vamanos, you'll hear that a lot in esports. So here comes the next point, off the boards and in. This is a game called Hockey for the Pong system. And now here comes the comeback. One, he's distracted. He lets another one in quick. And then before you know it, boom. When you're talking about sports in general, we've all, we've all competed. And in those competition spaces, things just emerge. You didn't plan for them, you didn't sort of you didn't script it, and that's to me why I think sports is the best drama, because it's unscripted and you don't know the results. So in that case, it was just a Pong tournament, but pretty cool. So in this case, I want to point out another way in which uh, eSports is beautiful. I did an article with Steve Canning. Steve Canning is here on our campus as uh, an instructional designer. And I'll tell you a little story about Steve. When I approached him and said, I think we need to write this article with Jason, the guy from the previous slide. He said, you know what, we're doing a special issue. We'd love to have your input. I said, I got this guy who's a professional top 500 Overwatch player. He's on a sponsored team. He could really give you an insider's perspective of what it's like. And Steve said to me, I don't want to do it. And he said, I'm embarrassed by it. And I said, no, Steve, you can't be embarrassed by this. He said, no, you don't understand. My family has no idea what I do, and I don't want them to know about it. I said, well, Steve, this is actually an opportunity for you to communicate to them about this. He said, okay. So I finally talked him into it. And really what it came down to is you have to have a very high level, and this is when I say high level, I mean really high level of mechanics. So your mechanics have to be flawless. So once you get to that level, you have to have teamwork. And so he's got a team of five. And so they're all communicating via comms. So they're back and forth, back and forth over comms um, in a very precise way. And then finally, you have to have improvisation. So with improvisation, he's, he equated it to being a jazz musician. And if I had to sum it up, if I had to sum up esports and why it's a real sport in sort of one phrase, I'd say it's got the reflexes of an NHL goalie the touch of a fly fisherman, and in the end, you've got the mind of a jazz musician. And add those together, and I think you've got something creative and special. And if you know esports, and if you watch esports, and you say, why are those fans so dedicated? Because they see that beauty. They see that creativity. And some of us who haven't participated in it, maybe we don't see it. But when I was doing this article with Steve, I definitely saw it. And there he is on the right with his sponsored team. He went on to Ronin Esports afterwards. And I will tell you another quick story about Steve. One of the people I work with um, has worked with a lot of different online instructional designers. And Steve helps us develop online courses. And the guy turned to me and he said, you know what? 
when I develop my online courses with other people, I have a struggle explaining things to them. And so when I work with Steve, it's like he's inside my mind. And when I talked to Steve, he said the number one thing that was the most important thing once you got to that high level is getting inside and playing little mind games, little mini games of chess. So all that experience, I can't think but that helped when he's dealing with faculty members. I guess it's extreme empathy, if you will, and he's, he's a master at it. Rosario Fichetto, he's our top athlete at SUNY Potsdam right now that nobody knows about. He's a music education major. I don't think that's a surprise. And Rosario is number 59 in the world in Smash Melee, which is phenomenal. He's going to be on our advisory board, as is Steve. And then we have Nicole D'Angelo, a high-level Overwatch player. And she represents to me what esports fans think in terms of culture. It's not just about the competition, it's about the culture. And we're very supportive of that cultural piece. And then finally, this is our esports team. We had our first competition against Siena back on March 28th. And what I saw here was pretty phenomenal. They got in after only one practice. They competed hard. They actually, from a technical point of view, competed and had more takedowns than the other team. But in the end, the other team was just a little more coordinated with their uh, final battles. And so it was beautiful to watch. But what was more beautiful as an educator is to watch afterwards when they pull up the creep score table. And they said, and they sort of went back and did a, a replay. And one by one, they went around and said, what can we do better? And I watched real learning happening in that space. And if, if this were a boardroom, if this were a creative marketing team, I would have seen the future. So these guys are ready for it. And I think everybody needs a chance at that sort of preparation for life that sports gives you. And eSports is just one more opportunity. And I'll leave you with this. My grandfather died a few years ago. And he saw his dream of basketball in Harrisville. They won a state championship this year. And that was a neat dream for him. But I have to say, my dream is that that opportunity where you create a culture, it builds a community, everybody is behind it. I want that for everybody in the school, and I think esports creates the opportunity for everybody in the school community. Thank you.